it'll come programmed fine for use but i'm going to see what does this do hello folks welcome to netcruiser rc all right we're going to talk about my truggy and some servos today this is my techno et410 and and it currently does not have a servo in it because i had to steal it out of this car to finish my eight scale season this is my techno eb4 0.3 and the servo that I had to move into this was out of this car. Now I moved over a fairly fancy Savox brushless servo because the servo that was originally in this as part of the 8 scale racing, I killed it. The servo that died is the Savox SC1267, I believe. Yeah, 1267 steel gear. It got a little weird wobble to it where I couldn't use it anymore. It became unusable for track driving. So I pulled out my servo out of the truggy and put it in the buggy and the buggy got an even more expensive servo. Again, a Savox SB brushless 2274 steel gear. Now those Savox servos, the brushless ones, I have been liking more and more, but they're also getting quite expensive. Now this company reached out to me, it's called AGF and they make quite a few high-end servos for quite a bit less money than the other name brand units, as well as this has extra features that some of the others don't have. I'll be testing this one out today. This is the AGF A81BHSW. Now here are the stats on it. Now this is potentially one of the fastest and fanciest servos that I own, as well as one of the main features of it is that it's programmable. So I'm gonna be hooking this up through a USB port into my Windows computer and we're gonna see what you can do with it. You should be able to program it for its angle of sweep, how it centers, and how much rotation it has. I would say that out of the box for racing, you don't need to program it. It should just work perfectly out of the box, but you can program it if you want to. So I'm gonna hook it up to a computer and see what kind of programming you can do for it before I put it into this chuggy. I am expecting this to perform very well. The thing about the AGF is that you may not see them on your store shelves. You may not have even heard of this company before, but they are definitely an up and comer. This company has been making servos for other high-end known brands. I don't know exactly for sure which ones. I just wanna thank AGF for sending over these servos for review. I just wanna be clear that this is not a sponsored video. So I wanna thank them very much for sending over these products. I have the fancy high-end brushless servo, the A81BHSW as well as the programming module. And then a style servo. This one also runs between 4.8 and, and 8.4 volts. This one's the A73BHLW. This one is also a brushless servo, 40 kilograms. It actually is a little bit stronger, but it's slower. Now this one at 7.4 volts does 0 0.11 seconds. This higher end model at 7.4 volts does 0 0.08 seconds. And at 8.4 volts, it'll do 0 0.75 seconds. I don't believe I have any equipment that can go up that high. BECs in all of my ESCs max out at 7.4 volts. So that's as much as I'm gonna be able to run them. For racing, I'm gonna be testing out this A81 and let's see how it performs. Today's video is mostly going to be about this a81 and I just wanted to show you some of the unboxing experience of it. It's a fully metal cased servo as well as you get a really nice metal servo horn with it. 25 tooth spline. That's good to know. It's a 35 kilogram but it is programmable. It's super fast. At its highest voltage it'll do 0 0.07 seconds. At 7.4 volts 0 0.08 seconds and at 6 volts it's around 0 0.09 seconds I believe. Really nicely manufactured. Some other basic horns, grommets, screws in the box. The rest of it's just the plastic. Now the programmer, the programming module is a separate part. Out of the box, you do not need to program this. It'll come programmed fine for use, but I'm going to see what does this do? Well, I will be testing this out and these are the type of parameters that I expect we will get to see. Here that you can enable it for Sanwa SSR mode. That's a big deal. If you have one of the highest end Sanwa radios that can do Sanwa super response, you can use this servo in that mode if you program it as such. If you want to get the absolute fastest protocol possible for your servo, that's why you want this. Just want to see what that experience is like once we get it hooked up into Windows. All right, I'll be using my Microsoft Surface here to test out the programming ability of the AGF servo. Uh, it does say that you can just plug in the USB stick and it should auto load the program or auto install it, the drivers, but I also just went to their website just seeing what they have to offer. They have a lot of software updates available, firmware updates for certain servos, as well as I have downloaded the programming utility just in case it doesn't work. So I'm gonna see what happens here when I plug it in. And it might just auto install the device. That's the other thing is that you could turn your servo into a smart winch servo. I'm not gonna waste a fancy high-speed servo for a winch servo, but that is something you can do with it. We are ready. 
set up and ready to go. That's device drivers are ready. I still think you're going to have to install the software. So I am opening the software now. And unrecognized, we're going to allow it anyway. And here we go, programming software is running. Let me move this window out of the way. Now we need to plug in the servo and get it detecting. There's nothing in the instructions book about how to connect the wiring. So the servo itself has a standard style receiver style connector. The pigtail you get with the programming module has a red style power connector and a data cable. Um, I'm not sure if I need to power it separately. We're soon going to find out. It doesn't tell me that, although it shows two plugs going into the servo. That's not possible with this model, hoping that it will just work off of the one connection. The other thing is that there's no clear indication here of which one is the signal wire. It'll work in either direction. So I need to find out which way is signal versus power. I might have it wrong. We're gonna plug it in now and see which way it works. And we'll plug in the servo. And again, this one would also allow it to plug in backwards. Okay, that was quite uneventful. It worked. I don't know if I just got lucky or if it's smart enough to, uh, to send signal and data over separate cables, but as soon as I plugged it in, it worked. Automatically picked up the servo model, the manufacturer, the firmware version. Top here, it says servo plugged in. I can program any of these abilities. It's gonna pan over the instruction booklet here so you can see what all of these things do. Plug in servo, click the read button. Okay, I'm gonna click the read button. Servo angle 130 degrees, neutral position 32, factor 70, PWM power, sensitivity ultra high. Okay, and when it loses power, it goes to neutral position. All this seems like it's good. I'm probably not gonna futz with it too much. I just wanted to make sure it worked. Uh, I'm just gonna read through the instructions and see if there's anything else I do wanna program. If I wanted this to become a servo that is a full winch style servo, I could just dial this up to be 360, 255. So maybe it does still have a stopping point, but we're gonna leave it at the 130 that it was. Now I could choose to run Samwa SSR mode, but I'm not going to because I don't have anything else that can do that. So for compatibility's sake, I'm gonna save it as SHR, which I normally do, Samwa high response, not Samwa super response. But if you're looking for a Samwa servo that can run in SSR mode, this is it, the A81BHSW. Another thing about this company AGF is that they make Samwa compatible receivers. These are in all my race cars right now that run the Samwa protocol. This ARX482R, this is made by AGF and you can get firmware updates for it from their website. ARX482R L-shaped receiver. Here's all the things that they make. They also make Futaba compatible receivers, Samwa compatible receivers, multi-rotor receivers, car gyros, signal decoders, and high-end servos. Pretty cool. I've been running these for a couple of years now, and I haven't had a problem with one of them yet. They're excellent. Now, the reason I was checking the firmware list is because I did not see in their own software uh, an option to download or check latest firmware. So it tells me that I'm at version 020102, either January of 2020 or April of 2020, depending on the date. Anyway, very cool. I don't think I have to do any custom programming, so I'm just gonna now put it in the car. After I do get it in the vehicle, if I do wanna program it, all you have to do is unplug the lead from your receiver, plug it into your computer, and then you can program it. So that's excellent. I do really like this. One other thing is that the servo lead is permanent. I know some other uh, higher end servos have started to come with a removable plug. I think that's more of a failure point. I like that it is a permanent lead in the base of the servo. It feels very well built. Just hooking up the wiring now on this servo while I'm installing it in the Truggy, and I just wanted to mention that there is a control wire, which is the gray wire. It's uh, just not as easy to identify as on some other servos because some other servos use significantly different colors, but yeah, there it is. It says TYU on the connector, and it's the gray one is the control wire. So this will be your black, your red, and your control wire. One other thing about the programmability, being able to change it into SSR mode, that's when you bind. I currently have mine bound for the Sanwa high response mode, but there's also Sanwa super response. So if I go into steering, I can change this to normal. I can change this between normal, 
Samwell High Response and Samwell Super Response. Now, if I do this, you have to rebind and program the servo to run in SSR mode. I'm not going to do that because I might end up forgetting that this is in SSR, change my radio as I test a lot of components. I'm just gonna put it into SHR mode because that's backwards compatible. But I just want to mention that if you do program this for SSR, set your radio and rebind that channel for SSR. All right, guys, the servo is installed and working and check out the speed responsiveness, I should say. Also, it can go faster than this. I know it's not running in 8.4 volts mode. It might even be at its slowest setting at six volt because I'm running a quick run ESC and I'm not sure that I programmed the back on the quick run. So it's either at six or 7.4 volts, but that is still plenty quick enough for racing and responsive enough. You can see when I let go of the wheel, it translates every single thing over. It's also one of the benefits of running in a high response mode through your radio with a super high responsive servo. You want those two things to kind of match up. So I'm happy with that. And it can go faster than this, but I'm not going to need it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button if you're new on here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching. I will be putting links in the description for all these AGF products shown. And uh, I think they're a good pickup. You can find them for significantly less money than the other name brand servos. It's certainly worth it. They are just as good. Also, extra bonus, you get this nice aluminum horn. If I wanted to run this horn, I could. It does match up, but just a little bit longer. If I had lined it exactly with my spline, it would be the inside hole, and that would work up fine. Just the outside of it would sweep a little bit closer to this bulkhead mount point. But that depends on every car. You know, a nice servo horn with it, that's always a nice benefit. So that's the AGF A81 programmable servo. And in the future, I will be also testing out this 40 kilogram brushless servo this one is not programmable but i also didn't have to program this one i could if i wanted to but i don't have to it's just an added feature let's go look at all the models that they offer and choose one that best suits your needs because you can overbuy something like this that you're never going to need to program you don't need this one's actually stronger but slower not programmable but still brushless and an excellent value for money so check out all the products that they make and take a look at agf as well as those receivers those receivers are excellent that i showed you I'm running them in almost all of my race cars. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching.